What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Monday edition of The Squeeze. I am Tyler Conium. It's a new day, and it's a new week. And as you notice, there was no video or podcast yesterday. It was Mother's Day, so we were just enjoying uh, the day with family, with my wife, the mother of our little daughter. So, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to be making bets on days like that. Just had to take it easy a little bit. There's only so many times you can put the pedal to the metal. So um, that's one of the things I've been thinking about lately is I do this six days a week, and I love doing it six days a week. But um, I felt bad last week. I had to do a YouTube short, and it's like, why should I feel – I shouldn't feel bad about doing this. I have a full-time job. We've got a one-year-old daughter. I do this. I put a lot of effort and a lot of time into this. Um, but on days that I can't – some days that I can't. Um, thank you to BetStamp for sponsoring our trip to the Blue Jays game on Saturday. It was a great win by the Blue Jays, even though Vladdy didn't get the home run. That's okay. They beat the Atlanta Braves on Saturday. If you're not familiar with BetStamp, it is a website to do all of your odds comparisons, all of your line shopping. So Vladdy was plus 450, where I bet it, he was plus 300 at some other books. So if you're betting every day, if you're betting a lot, you should be using BetStamp. It's also where you can track all of my bets, verified every day, so you know that I'm not lying about anything. There's a link in the description of this video that will take you to BetStamp. When you sign up, use the promo code TCONIUM. You will get exclusive offers at various sports books. Okay, so last week we ended up down just over a unit. Um... Because the bet on Saturday with the Vladdy home run, we only bet a half a unit there. And then we had Montreal beating TFC. That was a plus 125. They won that 2-0, so that was great. And then we had under, we took under in the Stars and the Kraken. They went over again. There were another nine goals. So touche, lesson learned there. Um, so it was just, you know, kind of a break-even week. It was what it was. But we're back this week, and now we're at the point where... Tonight's the last night before we head into the conference finals in the NHL and the NBA, which means we go to start incorporating a little bit more baseball. It's incredible how quickly it all seems to go when you're talking about it every day and you're doing it every day. I do have a, an unofficial plus 1800 ticket on the Lakers, so I will be talking about that here in case you have something similar, just sort of what we want to do, because that's a 17 unit. It's a full unit bet on the Lakers to win the title. And it's seven that's a 17 unit win. So there's going to be a way with four teams left that we're going to make money on that play somehow playing off of it so we will see going to start tonight in the nhl though it's the last game it's game seven against the seattle kraken and the dallas stars we got a little bit of another interesting parlay we did with this this with vegas in game five and it hit and i like for this to happen again so i'm taking the seattle kraken plus two and a half so to not lose by uh, three or more goals and for this to go over four and a half it's gone over six every single time there have been nine goals, seven goals, nine, nine, six, and nine. Just need this game to go over four and a half, and we just need Seattle to not lose by three. Now, when Seattle has lost, they've lost by two, they've lost by three, and they've lost by three. Because of the empty netters, it's an elimination game. You might have the net empty more often. The reason I'm doing this is because I actually think that Seattle's live to win this game. I think the Seattle Kraken can win this game, even though it is in Dallas. I think this is going to be a great hockey game. Probably going to sprinkle a little bit on the Seattle Kraken money line. Where is the money line at right now for the Kraken? It is plus 180 at score bet. So that's not a bad bet either, putting a little bit money on the Kraken to win this game. But combining those two gets you to a minus 120 parlay. So I'm not going to make the mistake of betting under again, although I don't know if it necessarily gets to six or to seven. But if we just we just needed to get to five goals, so three, two, four, one, all of that cashes. Well, we don't want four, one if it's the stars, but anything over five or anything over four and a half. And then the Seattle Kraken plus two and a half. So a close game where there's a lot of goals. It's just the way that these two teams, two teams are playing, even though Dallas was under during the regular season. Seattle and Dallas have scored a ton of goals on each other. I don't expect this to magically change here in game seven, especially when you do have the empty net potential there. So Seattle Kraken plus two and a half and over four and a half for the game is a minus 120 parlay at FanDuel. Your next bet of the day, we're going to go to Shohei Otani taking on the Baltimore Orioles. And I like this game to go under eight. A big reason of that is, well, it's Shohei Otani. The Angels are 20 and 19 to the under this season. Baltimore is 20 and 18 to the over, but both around 500. You've got Shohei Otani going today for the Angels. He's 4 and 1 with a 2.74 ERA. You've got Grayson Rodriguez going for Baltimore. His ERA is a little bit bloated. It's over five. Um, but 
I think he's going to put it together. He's a good pitcher. Um, I expect his ERA to come down a little bit. And look, the Los Angeles Angels aren't necessarily the greatest team in the world offensively. Yeah, they've got Trout. Yeah, they've got Otani. But they don't have much else outside of that. So I think Grayson Rodriguez will be able to play a little bit better. He does have an ERA. This game is being played uh, in Baltimore. He's got a little bit better of a record at home. He's 1-0 with a 4.2 ERA. He's not walking as many guys, uh, which I like. He's getting a few more strikeouts. And I think with Otani as well, it definitely opens it up to be an under game. And then you look at the way that these two teams are trending right now. Under is 3-0 and in Otani's last three starts versus a team with a winning record. Under is 4-0-1 and in their last five with a total set at eight or higher. And then you look at Baltimore, they're under is 6-0-1 and in their last seven overall. Under is 6-0-1 and in their last seven at home. And under is 6-0-1 and in their last seven versus a team with a winning record. So both these teams are playing towards the under. I think Otani should be able to neutralize Baltimore. Baltimore, even though they've played really well. And I just think the Angels offense isn't much to write home about. So they might not score a ton of runs either. And you have the push potential at eight, which I like. So Los Angeles Angels and Baltimore Orioles under eight. That's minus 110 at FanDuel. And your last bet of the day is a player prop on Merrill Kelly. So you've got the Diamondbacks at the Oakland Athletics. For now, they're the Oakland Athletics. They're terrible. They're 9-33. and 33. This team is already in Vegas. This team is already wherever the heck it is that they're moving. They're 4-18 and 18 at home. They get like 5,000 fans a night maximum. They're terrible. <laughs> Diamondbacks are 4-0 and in their last four Monday games. Oakland is, you know, one in five in their last six. They're just, they're just not good at all. They've got Ruchinski going to the mound tonight against the Diamondbacks. He's 0-3 with an 8.16 ERA. Ugh. You've got Merrill Kelly going for the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he's been good. He is 3-0 on the season. He's got a 3.18 ERA, a whip of 1.15. And so my bet is just for Merrill Kelly to get the victory today against the Oakland Athletics. So not necessarily just the Diamondbacks, but for Merrill Kelly to get the victory. And I do like this. Last year, Merrill Kelly was 13-8 with a 3.37 ERA. It's been a good pitcher for Arizona. You look at his recent games, he's gone 6, 7, 6, 5, 6, 6, and 5. So in his last eight starts, eight starts in a row, he's gone long enough to get the victory. He hasn't lost since April 22nd. That was a 5-3 loss against San Diego, a really good team. He's beaten St. Louis. He's beaten Colorado. He's beaten Miami. Uh, He's had a no decision against the Dodgers, but he only gave up two earned runs there. That was in one of his uh, no decisions, sorry, in one of his losses. So I think Merrill Kelly is going to have a good start. If he at least goes five innings, he's eligible for the win there as long as they're ahead, which I think they should be. But again, in his last three starts, he's gone six innings, seven innings, and six innings. He's also struck out six, ten, and five. So I like Merrill Kelly to get the victory here against the absolutely pathetic Oakland Athletics. As we're again, we're heading into baseball season. You're probably going to see a lot of Blue Jays bets. You're going to see a lot of bets against the Oakland Athletics because, well, they're very, very terrible. We also have the PGA Championship coming up. So there's a lot of really fun stuff coming up. But your three bets for Monday, I've got the Seattle Kraken plus two and a half. And for that game to go over four and a half for a minus 120 parlay at FanDuel, I've got the Los Angeles Angels and the Baltimore Orioles to go under eight. That's minus 110 at FanDuel. And I'm taking Merrill. Merrill Kelly to get the victory. It's minus 115 at bet365. As always, drop a comment if you're fading or following. You can follow me on Twitter at Tyler Connie for more picks and props throughout the day. TikTok and Instagram for just your picks portions and your audios on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Have a great Monday and let's talk sports.